Hi. So today we are starting off chapter number 10, double digits, woohoo. And yesterday we learned a little bit more about uh, this library lock-in. Kyle got one of the 12 spots, woohoo, go him. And yesterday we left off when they went to the store to purchase some games because Kyle, being very, friend, or being very kind and nice and gracious, was willing to share his $500 prize money um, with his family so they could all buy games. And so today I'm interested in learning um, how far away this library lock-in is and what's to come with this library. It sounds so exciting. So let's get right to it, okay? All right, and we are starting with chapter number 10. Now this is what I call a party, said Kyle's mother as she helped herself to a bacon-wrapped shrimp from the tray being carried by a waiter in a tuxedo. Kyle and his parents were in a crowded ballroom of the Parker House Hotel for the Lemoncello Library's Gala Grand Opening Reception. The Parker House was located right across the street from the old Gold Leaf Bank building and the cluster of office buildings, craft shops, clothing stores, and restaurants called Old, called old Town. I'm going to see if we can find Akimi, said Kyle. Oh, God. Now this is what I call a party, said Kyle's mother as she helped herself to a bacon-wrapped shrimp from a tray being carried by a waiter in a tuxedo. Kyle and his parents were in the crowded ballroom of the Parker House Hotel for the Lemoncello Library's Gal Grand Opening Reception. The Parker House was located right across the street from the old Gold Leaf Bank building and the cluster of office buildings, craft shops, clothing stores, and restaurants called Old Town. I'm going to see if I can find a kimi, said Kyle to his mom and dad. Give her our congratulations, said his mom. We're proud of her, too, ended his dad. Kyle made his way through the glittering sea of dressed-up adults. Even though his parents had put on fancy clothes for the reception, Kyle was wearing something comfortable to go exploring in, as instructed by the lock-in guide he'd received on Wednesday. He packed his sleeping bag and a small suitcase with a change of clothes, toiletries, and yes, as required requested an extra pair of underpants. Kyle saw Sierra Russell all alone in the corner near a clump of curtains. It didn't look like her mother had come to the party with her. Sierra, of course, had her nose buried in a book. Kyle shook his head. The girl was about to spend the night in a building filled with books, and she was already skipping all the free food and pop so she could read. That was just nutty. Haley Daly, wearing a sparkly blouse, was posing for a wall of photographers who wanted to snap her picture. Her mother was there at the party, too. While the cameras focused on Haley's smile, Mrs. Daly wrapped up a couple of chicken kebabs in a napkin and slipped them inside her purse. Now Kyle saw Charles Chitlington. The poor guy must not have read the memo about comfortable clothes. He was still wearing his khakis and blazer, just like his dad. Kyle figured the Chitlington family must own like 300 pairs of pleated tan pants. Hey, Kyle! Akimi waved at him from... Uh, a fake shrub curled to look like a silly straw. Hey, said Kyle. Did you remember to bring your library card? Yep, Kyle pulled it out of his pocket. Huh, said Akimi. I got different books on the back of mine. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish by Dr. Seuss. And Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. Guess they're all like baseball cards, said Kyle. They're all different. Hey, you guys! Miguel Ferdinand was more excited than usual, which was saying something pushed through the mob to join them. Did you try these puffy cheesy things? Nah, said Kyle, I'm sticking to food I recognize. The puffy cheesy things are called fromage tartlets, said Andrew Peckelman, coming over to join the group. Huh? said Kyle. Good to know. A waiter passed them with a tray loaded down with small boxes of Mr. Lemoncello's anagram crackers, uh, cracker cookies. Oh, I love these, said Kyle, taking a box off the platter and opening it. These cookies are in the shape of letters, and you have to see how many words you can spell. Cool, said Miguel, snagging a fistful of cookies out of Kyle's box. Tastes good, too. Yep, said Kyle, but the more you eat, the harder the game gets. Why? asked Andrew Peckelman. Less letters, said Akimi, snatching two B's and a Q and wolfing them down. Mmm, barbecue flavor flavored. Kyle spread out the remaining cookies in his palm. U-N-F-E-H-A-V, 
He grinned as he deciphered the easy anagram. Have fun. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dr. Zachinko, dressed in a bright red suit, strode to the center of the ballroom. May I have your attention, please? Mr. Lemoncello will be arriving shortly to say a few brief words. After that, I will escort the 12 essay contest winners across the street to the library. Therefore, children, might I suggest that you eat up? Food and drink are not permitted any where in the library except for the Book Nook Cafe, conveniently located on the first floor. Miguel, Miguel grabbed a few more puffy cheesy things. When she thought no one was looking, Mrs. Daly shoved a napkin bundle of bacon-wrapped shrimp into her purse. Akimi nibbled on a couple of chocolate-dipped pretzel sticks. Aren't you going to grab some more grub, she said to Kyle. No, thanks. I only like food I can play with. One last thing, announced Dr. Zachinko. We, of course, want our winners to have a fun night. However, I must insist that each of you respect my number one rule. Be gentle. With each other, and most especially, the library's books and exhibits. Can you do that for me? Yes, shouted all the winners except Charles Chitlington. He said, indubitably, Good thing that the library has dictionaries, muttered Akimi. Half the time, it's the only way to figure out what Chitlington's saying. Suddenly, all the adults in the ballroom started clapping. Mr. Lemoncello looked like a beanpole, wearing a tailcoat and tiny birthday party fireman's hat. Strode into the room through, the slide, through a side door. Thank you, thank you, he said, stretching the elastic band to raise his kid-sized hat and tipping it toward the crowd. You are too kind. Then he let go of the hat. It snapped back with a sharp thwack. As Dr. Zachenko informed you, I'd like to say a few brief words. Here they are, short, memorandum, and underpants. And let us pause to remember the immortal words of Dr. Seuss. The more that you read, the more things you'll know, and the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Children, Mr. Lemoncello flourished his arms toward the ballroom, ballroom door. It's time to go across the street. Your amazingly spectacular new public library awaits. Chapter 11. Eager to see what was inside the new library, the 12 essay contest winners quickly gathered behind Dr. Zachinko. This way, children, said the head librarian. Follow me. The crowd cheered as they marched out of the ballroom and totter toting their sleeping bags and suitcases. There was more cheering, plus some hooting and hollering, when they reached the hotel lobby and went out the revolving doors into the street. The new public library, with its glistening gold dome, took up half the downtown block, its back butting up against an old-fashioned uh, office tower. The building was a boxy fortress, three stories tall, with stately columns that acted like bookends. Because the windowless walls have been painted to resemble a row of giant books lined up on a shelf, it's like a majestic Greek temple, gushed Miguel. And the words, world's biggest bookcase, added Sierra Russell, who had finally put, her, uh, put away her paperback. Velvet ropes lined a path across the main street that would lead to her carpet, leading up a flight of stairs to the arched entryway and serious steel, seriously steel, not to mention round, front door. Kyle had to smile when he saw what was tethered to the railing on either side of the steps balloons. A big bruiser, maybe 6'4", 250 pounds, in sunglasses and a black sports coat, stood in front of the library's circular door, which had several large valve wheels like you'd see on a submarine hatch. The burly guard wore his hair long uh, in long ropey dreadlocks. What's with that door? asked Haley Daly, who, of course, had pushed her way to the front. It looks like it came from a bank vault or something. It's the door from the old gold leaf bank's walk-in vault, said Dr. Zachinko. It weighs 20 pounds, or 20 tons. Akimi turned around and whispered, my dad designed the support structure for that thing. Checked out the hinges. Kyle nodded. He was impressed. Why a vault door? asked Kayla Corson. Because, said Dr. Zachinko, one sleepy Saturday when Mr. Lemoncello was your age, he was working in the old public library over on Market Street. He was so lost in his thoughts, he did not hear the sirens as police cars raced past the library to the bank where a burglar alarm had just been activated. This door serves as a reminder to us all. Our thoughts are safe when we are inside a library, 
Not even a bank robbery can disturb them. Miguel was nodding like crazy. He could relate. It also helps keep our most valuable treasures secure. There aren't any windows, observe uh, Andrew Peckelman, probably to stop the bank robbers from busting in. But shouldn't you have added, like, windows when you turned it into the library? A library doesn't need windows, Andrew. When we have, or we have books which are windows into worlds we can ne e never even dreamed possible. An open book is an open mind, said, added Charles Chitlington. That's what I always say. Dr. Zachenko pulled out a bright red note card. Before we enter, please listen very carefully. Your library cards are the keys to everything you will need, she read. The library staff is here to help you find whatever it is you are looking for. She smiled slightly, tucked the card back into her pocket, turned to the security guard, and said, Clarence, will you do the honors? With pleasure, Miss, Miss Dr. Z. Z. With pleasure, Dr. D. Z. Wow, I can't say that. Dr. Z. Clarence turned one giant wheel, spun around, and cranked a third. Noiselessly, the 20-ton door swung open. The first thing Kyle could see inside was a trickling fountain in the grand foyer of a brilliant white marble. The fountain featured a life-size statue of Mr. Lemoncello standing on a lily pad in the middle of a shadow, reflecting a pool, ten, a pool ten feet wide. His head was tilted back so water could spurt from his mouth in an arc. Kyle noticed a quote chiseled into the statue's pedestal. Knowledge not shared remains unknown. Luigi L. Lemoncello. Beyond the fountain, though, an, through an arched walkway, was a huge room filled with desks. When everybody had shuffled into the entrance hall, Dr. Zachinko turned to the security guard. Clarence? Clarence had hauled the heavy steel door shut. Kyle heard the whir of spinning wheels, the clink of grinding gears, and a reverberating clunk. Wow, said Miguel. Talk about a lock-in. I'll be in control in the control center, Dr. Z, said the security guard. Very well, Clarence. Clarence disappeared behind a red door. Now then, children, said the librarian. If you will all follow me into the rotunda reading room. As the rest of the group started filing into the gigantic circular room, Kyle checked out a display case behind the red door. A sign over it read, Staff Picks, Our Most Memorable Reads. A dozen books were lined up on four shelves. One cover in the middle of the bottom row caught Kyle's eye. It showed a football player wearing a number 19 jersey dropping back to hurl a pass. Kyle made a mental note of the title. In the pocket, Johnny uh, Unitas and me. Tomorrow morning, when the lock-in was over, he might use his library card to check it out for his big brother Mike. Wow! Everybody gasped as they stepped into the rotunda reading room and looked up. The entire underside of the dome looked like, a, like space, as seen from the Hubble telescope. A dusty spiral nebula billowed up. A galaxy of stars twinkled, and meteorites whizzed across the ceiling. Ooh. The space imagery on the ceiling dissolved to, into ten distinct panels, each one becoming a display of swirling graphics. Those are ten categories of the Dewey Decimal System, whispered Miguel, sounding awestruck. See the panel with Cleopatra, the guy mount, mountain climbing, and the Viking ship sailing across it? That's for 900 to 999, history and geography. Cool, said Kyle. Tucked beneath the ten screens and arch niches were incredible 3D statues glowing a ghostly green. I believe those are holographic projections, said Andrew Peckelman, waving up at the statue as that was waving down at him. The room under the dome was huge. It was circular with a round desk at the center that was surrounded by four rings of reading desks. Kyle saw that half of the rotunda was filled with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. The other half had balconies on the second and third floors that reminded him of the open atrium of a hotel he and his family had stayed at once. While everybody was gawking at the architecture, Dr. Zachenko said the words Kyle has been waiting to hear all day. Now then, who's ready for our first game? All right, so that concludes our read aloud for today. We read chapters 10 and 11. Join me again while we read chapters 12 and 13 next.
I'm so excited to share this with you. This library sounds so cool, and I'm really excited for this first game that Kyle's been waiting for too, and we're going to find that out next time. All right, bye.